What is up you guys? It's your boy Captain Jack. Welcome back to the channel. So we got another mission with you guys today, except we are finally taking the jet ski out. It's been a hot minute. The weather's been so bad lately, but I did some serious upgrades to this thing. GPS, depth sounder with Seymour maps. So I mounted this on myself. Um, totally customized and then also I have a uh, I have a surprise for you guys whenever I go out but I'm at the ramp by myself just launched the jet ski and I'm going to get suited up and I'm gonna meet somebody on the beach so just wait a minute and uh, yeah we're, we're gonna go we got an exciting time for you on this one Let's go! I know I'm a little worried. I don't want to get capsized. We don't really need one. Nah. Um, I mean, yeah, we we could probably we could probably stow it on here. Yeah. Just in case we have a fish. Yeah. 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 Let's bring it. Whatever. Let's go. Scotty boy. Everybody knows Scotty boy. Oh yeah. We got we got some waves. Oh. Yeah, just throw it on for now and then hop on and then we'll, we'll get organized once we get out of here. Because we got some we got some uh whoa, whoa, whoa. sorry. We got swell coming in. We'll just get it. We'll just get off uh, out of the out of the shore break a little bit. <laughs> Dude, we did it. We're making it. Now we just gotta go. Uh, hope nobody's hit our numbers. I'm not worried about it. The fish are gonna be around. Scott, what do you think? We gonna get them? I think we're gonna get a wahoo. I think we're gonna get something. I don't know. A wahoo. I don't know what. Dude, what do you? Hey, what do you think? What do you think of Garmin? Uh, right. Dude, we're, we're, we're moving, up, moving up in life. Now we'll be able to see where we're at, actually. Sheep's head numbers in there, right? Yeah, all our sheepy numbers are in there. This video is actually brought to you by Jen and Eno. It is a sea scooter, and we're actually gonna use it today for um, the, the, basically to hold our jet ski in position because the wind is pumping and it might be moving basically where we don't want to go. Um, it might be crossing the current. Uh, so we're gonna use that to kind of move us and the jet ski without having to stress and kick and use a lot of effort and that way we can focus more on diving and breeze ups and stuff like that so yeah if you have not already go ahead and check those guys out i'll leave a link in the description below and i'll go through all of their um all their info while we are out there on the water with some voiceovers all right you guys this is absolute like game changer using the sonar it is so sick. Uh, not sonar, but uh, GPS. And we are literally right on the spot. Don't have to take my phone in and out of the jet ski. But we're going to make a couple drifts and I'll do some voiceovers and talk to you guys while we're down below. Welcome back underwater, everybody, and welcome to the voiceovers. If you're new to the channel, uh, my name's Jack and I do all these crazy diving adventures and hunting adventures off the coast of Florida. Um, and all over the place. If you're uh, if you enjoy this kind of stuff, do me a favor, subscribe, and uh, give this video a thumbs up to help push it around. Around, and uh, you can see the kind of crazy stuff we get into. I hop in the water, and this is not out of the norm. Bull sharks are absolutely everywhere. Um, so you see, we hop in. Don't really pay them too much attention unless they're coming after our fish. But go ahead, load up the spears, and um, another really those who have been following the channel a really cool announcement um rob allen is actually going to start sponsoring uh the channel uh i have a couple of his awesome uh spear guns that are on the way uh and i've been using a rob allen since i first started diving uh back in like probably 10 years ago and 
I haven't switched since and the one I'm using is the roller so it's the 120 roller and you'll get to see it in action this video so now I get to use this sea scooter and unfortunately it's super loud the GoPro picks up like the high frequency that it puts off but this is not what it sounds like in real life now it works really well and I'll talk about it kind of at the end of the video on how well this uh, scooter helps us out while using the jet ski in the video because there are problems when you're using this jet, jet ski but the biggest advantage is you don't have to have a boat driver you're just towing the jet ski along and it makes it easy to clean up easy to get out there real quick and also easy to make multiple drifts while you're diving you know short distance areas which is exactly what we were doing on this trip i have a probably 25 foot float line attached to the jet ski and then at the end is my flasher setup, which is kind of like a um, decoys that makes it look like there's bait fish around and it attracts larger pelagic fish. And you'll see it work in this video. Um, so what I did with that scooter is I just went ahead and attached it to the float line. And whenever I needed to pull the jet ski or myself to keep up with the divers, I just hit the throttle and go. So now here's my first dive. You guys can hold your breath with me. Uh, here's the countdown. I don't think I go very deep. Um, and I don't even think, I don't know, I don't, I don't remember. I just throw these things in there. Um, but I make a drop. Obviously the sharks are around, so I'm going to be a little hesitant, a little more conscious when I shoot a fish, if I shoot a fish. Uh, one, I need to make sure I make a really good shot. And when the sharks are around, the worst thing you can do is let the fish dangle down at depth. Uh, if you don't see sharks, it's not that much of an issue, but I make a drop. I see some rainbow runners. I'm contemplating shooting them. Uh, this isn't that deep of a dive. I'm probably in about 90 feet of water to the to the bottom, but I only go to about 55 here, so I'm just you know about 40 feet off the bottom, and I'm hoping for a pelagic, maybe a African pompano or an amberjack or something, uh, a type of pelagic will come by, and if I see a bottom fish, I'll either make a play on it or... I'll just know that they're around and next drift I'll make a drop but we're on some really big structure here looking for some snapper of some sort kind of or mangrove or something to pop its head out of the structure because grouper and hogfish is closed um, not really likely to see a hogfish on this spot but groupers could hang around but I didn't see any on this drop and this is kind of just a uh, survey mission on this first dive and now whenever I head to the surface, I see, you know, the main thing I want to do is look for my dive buddy. And he's watching me from the jet ski. If there's any issues, he'll haul butt over there and help me out. Um, also, if I shoot a fish, he'll haul butt over there and try to make a, you know, help me out, get a backup shot if, the, if need be. Um, but when we're doing this diving, we're just taking turns dropping. And what's really nice is that we have that scooter, which allows us to keep up with the other, other diver while they're down deep um making drops so if they need us we can you know keep up but it made diving a little bit tough on this on this time because um because the wind was pushing the jet ski off of the spot you gonna shoot one of those rainbows or just stare about it. Uh, there's a big one Dude, if you shoot them and rip them up. So right there, you hear us having uh, open communication about what we're thinking about doing. Uh, Scott was, well, we both were thinking about shooting one of those rainbows runners because uh, we made a couple drifts at this point, um, and we haven't had any luck, haven't seen a whole lot except for those runners. And those, if you've never had rainbow runner, they make great sashimi, great fried fish, grilled fish. So they're definitely an option for the uh, for the for the dinner table that night. Um, Scott made a drop. This, like I said, the the scooter really helped me stay on the spot and hold on, you know, stay above him. And like I said, when I was at the surface with him, game plan is if he shoots a rainbow runner, I'm there to back up if he needs to rip him up to the surface. Uh, but he he opted out. But I end up making a drop here. We swapped off the scooter, and now Scotty Boy was going to be at the surface backing me up and now that you know we were open communication about the runner situation 
I didn't really hesitate to uh, to shoot one on this dive. And now I don't go very deep. I'm only about 23 feet. Mm. These guys kind of come in. Like I said, mm. I'm going to make a really good shot. Mm. Made a headshot mm. on this guy. Got my line and kicked out the back of my gun. Um, just so I can bundle all the line up and get that fish to me as soon as possible. And you'll see some of those sharks kind of come in. But they lose interest really quick once... I have that fish in my hand. What a shot. It helps for sure. It helps keep up with the diver. Now once I have the fish in my hand, I braided him, brained him, I bled him, I go ahead and gut him all as well because I'm not putting him right into the cooler per se, uh, and I don't want those the innards of the fish to make the fillets a little warmer or anything and kind of spoil them. So I gut the fish and I end up just tossing him in the gunnels of the jet ski, and I'll deal with him whenever I you know ne next opportunity i'll hop on the ski or when we change spots i'll put him in the cooler get him on ice and get him nice and cold make it easier to play and whenever i get the fish i want to go ahead before you know i stow the fish or anything i just put the fish on the tip of my spear and i go ahead and reload my gun uh that way everything is reloaded everything is organized and then i'll swim the fish back to the jet ski and then I'll like I said I'll toss them in the gunnel uh, so I'm not swimming around with a bunch of line and everything getting all tangled on everything so whenever we're doing this jet ski stuff big thing to do is make sure everything is very organized um, that way you don't lose gear I have yet to lose gear while I've been diving off the jet ski and this is a very very tiny jet ski with a lot of potential for things to go wrong um, but like I said, see the sharks. The sharks have not let up. We know they're around, and if we get an opportunity on a fish, we're gonna make sure we're very careful. And when at the end of this dive, we actually talk about it and contemplate being done. But Scotty says, "Hey, just one more drift," and I'm very happy he does. And you'll see why in just a minute. So I know I get a lot of questions on the roller and how you load it. A lot of them come with a big loop that you can hand load, but I always use the load assist and I have it snapped onto the bottom of my gun. You saw me loading it there. Um, but yeah, that's always how I load it. And it also it gives me a clean view. There's not like a big loop when I'm trying to aim my spear gun. Uh, and I always bring an extra spare with my die stuff as I, uh, you know, whenever I go out, just in case that band snaps. Because um, it's almost impossible to load if your spear gun is up to the correct percentage. Uh, so make another drop. This is one of our kind of our last drops uh, before we're about to call it quits. And uh, I just see the big structure that we're diving. Nice uh, part of a shipwreck. And uh, you'll Ooh. see a couple of bull sharks off in the distance. And like I said, we're, we're, we're really hoping for Pelagic to cruise by. And I'm just kind of sitting above the wreck doing maybe a little grunting and just keeping my eyes peeled mid-water column and just glancing towards the bottom every once in a while hoping to see um, some kind of uh, reef fish or rock fish but on this drop didn't see any of that but I do go up and Scott um, we talk about making one more drift after I come out because after this dive I was like alright there's probably not a whole lot here um so we make a new drift and scott is at the surface and just starts taking off at the surface and i know this means one thing it means he's in pursuit of probably a wahoo because uh, they either hang out like just 
a little bit under the surface or they hang out right at the surface. So now once that happened, I became team support because he's in pursuit of a fish. I'm making sure I get the flashers. I grab the scooter, making sure I can keep up with Scott. And I also threw some uh, chum, hoping to bring the fish in uh, for him to get a better shot. What happened? Big one? Like an 80 pounder. God! Like a 50, like a 70 pounder. Oh. Mm -hmm. I should have gotten level with him. I tried to shoot up on him. Oh, dude. I was like well within range. Really? I think the, I think the angle was like, shooting through you off. Yeah. Let's finish this drift and do it again. Huh? Let's finish this drift and do it again. Yeah. All right, that's a heartbreaker. Scott, how big were those Wahoo? Both were big, one was very big. Yeah, he said like one was like 80, one was 50. Pretty gnarly. Um, but we're gonna make another drift. Um, this this scooter is like money. It really helps us out a lot. It keeps us on each other when we're the other one's down there diving and we can catch up to one another. I, I caught up to Scott in no time, whatever I had, I was rocking it. But we're gonna get back in and uh, hopefully some who's are still around. Literally on the next drift, we go for a while, don't see anything, and we're both keeping our eyes peeled toward this towards the surface. And um, after I'm kind of like, okay, we already shot, you know, past the wreck and everything. We I decide to make a blind drop, and I'm kind of just gonna go down to the bottom like I did on the dive before and just hover, just so I can see bottom and so I can also see out into the distance. And now I'm keeping my eyes peeled on the bottom, but I'm also quickly checking the surface, getting my bearings, and uh, also, you know, these things could come through mid-water column where I'm at. So I'm looking up current, see a shark, and I look up and I see two stud wahoo. And now I take quickly look to the left to see if Scott was in pursuit, and he wasn't, so then I knew it was my turn. And I was on my way up, so I was hoping that they would kind of veer towards me and one thing I needed right there, you see me tuck my gun back. I didn't want to point my gun towards them, but right now I see them kind of on their way out and I'm trying to kind of pique their interest, but not press them too hard. And I'm kind of swimming their direction. So I start pumping the brakes on that and I just start swimming directly the direction they're going. And I'm trying to swim parallel, hoping that they come into me. So now I keep them, my, you know, them in the corner of my eyes and that one came right to me. Like it looked like it was going straight to me, but then he veered the other direction. I was hoping it literally, if, he, if I was at the surface and he kept coming to where he was like just under me, I would make a quick duck dive and take a shot. I've done that before in the past, but he didn't do that. They kind of started veering off into the distance and I made one last kind of Hail Mary, make a drop really hoping that they you know kind of come in to see what I am and I just do a little duck dive hoping that they you know change directions but at this point I've kind of know that the opportunity is blown and I'm not going to take a dumb shot uh, if they give me the shot that's great if not I can live with not making a dumb shot on a beautiful beautiful fish They're fing massive. <laughs> massive. Dude, two of them. Two of them. Yeah. They, dude, I was just I was swimming alongside them for so long. Just, just trying to out of range. just just out of range. I was talking my gun and they were looking at me. And then I started coming up and one came to beeline directly to me. And then I like slowed down and then he turned and he was like so close, like just out of range. Yeah. And then uh, I was gonna shoot unless I was like 100 percent sure like he was in range. They're huge. Yeah. Either of them are monsters. Like <laughs> They're hanging out in that same area we keep dropping at. Yeah. So let's let's just reset. reset. Yeah, let's do it. Now those Wahoo got us super fired up, so we made multiple drifts, but didn't see them at all. Um, we this is a kind of a farther in the deeper area, so we just kind of changed depths, hoping that we would catch them passing again. Unfortunately, they did not pass, but. We were in the deeper stuff and I was like, you know what, we're in deep area, maybe there's a mutton or something towards the bottom. And I did a nice little breathe up and I told myself, shoot, I'm just gonna make sure I go all the way to the bottom 
and hope that something comes by. Uh, so I, on this dive, I, you know, you guys can hold your breath with me. I'm gonna make an 80, no, sorry, no, 95 foot drop to the bottom, uh, hoping that there could be a mutton that I peak, you know, curiosities. They see something randomly coming down to the deeper area. And I've had it work before where muttons just come in off the sand. Um, but it's crazy because I'm, you know, you think this is like just straight plain desert, but there's a lot of like smaller reef fish and stuff hanging out here. There was a, a big queen fit, queen angel fish over there. Big uh, bull shark came into me. So you see how predatory fish do come in and see what you are, um, which all those, you know, muttons, uh, pelagics, those are predatory fish, including the shark. So. If you make a deep, deep drop like that, there's a high chance that stuff will come into you. Uh, but n unfortunately, nothing really on this dive, and it kind of spooked me a little bit, especially being down there with a big bull shark like that. And he honestly kind of snuck up behind me. But I headed to the surface, and I think it's about time to switch gears at this point. Oh my God. Oh. Go, go, go. Scotty's gun just fell over one. Woo! Scary. Good thing you saw it. Yeah. Two Good guns, point. max, we'll say. Oh, I don't think that'll come off. All right. Uh, so, ooh. Yeah. Yep, good to go. Sorry, sorry, Scott had to hop on. All right, well, no wahoo. Scotty blew it. I put him on it and he, he didn't prevail, which is a shame, but it was beautiful seeing them, man. God dang, they're pretty in the water. Uh, and I hope the GoPro does it justice and you guys were able to see the ones that I was kind of after and you saw how I wasn't chasing them. I, oh, at certain points I wasn't even looking at them because uh, I just wanted to make them feel comfortable that I was like just swimming along with them there was that, and that I wasn't a threat. but. It wasn't enough to get them to come in. At one point, they beelined right to me, but then they veered away. But whew, that was so close. Uh, we're gonna change up gears, though. We're gonna try to dive something maybe a little shallower. Maybe get some uh, get some reef fish for dinner. We did get that one yellow or sorry rainbow runner. But this is when this is when Scott comes in handy. We dive the shallower stuff. It, no, nothing's safe when he's around when we dive the shallow patchy stuff. So we're gonna find some rubble on the Seymour maps. And I'll see you guys back in the water. You'll see we're in a little bit of a shallower area and there's some structure that we can go down and hunt this structure. And this is my first time diving this, this spot. Um, a big barracudas down there at the bottom. But on my way down, I see a nice mutton kind of swimming off towards the middle of the screen right there. Um, I should take my time on this guy because I just made my drop. But I don't know what happened there. That was definitely an easy shot to make. I don't know if I was the downward angle through my shot downwards. Uh, but I shot under the fish and he kind of just bolted out of the way. But it is good knowing that there are muttons around. So hopefully we can uh, get another shot on one of these guys. What the fuck? Massive mutton. I whiffed. No, I missed. There's a lot of them. There's a lot of them here. All right, you guys, I have no excuse for that. That was a clean whiff. Uh, you don't get them all, so at least I show you the ones I missed. I should have taken my a, a little bit more time. I guess I felt I didn't have enough time, and so I may have rushed the shot. But uh, yeah, we're gonna reset, maybe get a shot. There were a couple more buttons. I saw them darting in the distance, so let's get after it. You can tell we're on the same area as before, same same looking structure, uh, and it's just some debris in the middle of sand, and it seemed like the muttons were really attracted to this, because we saw a ton of muttons, but they were, majority of them were small, but there were the occasional big, big ones. So, uh, so I make a drop. Looking up, it did some grunting, and it brought in a nice school of yellow jacks, and at this point, I just want to get some dinner. Now, I was going for a stone shot on that, but unfortunately, uh, I did not stone the fish. I shot a little high, so I'm going to make sure it's a high-risk, high-reward shot. Uh, you end up, uh, if you miss the stone shot, there's a high chance it could rip out. But with a fish like this, uh, and I knew there weren't sharks around, I went ahead and babied him, and he got 
wrapped up in like basically in the worst way um and i've come to find that out with those little fish they really like that see how he just wrapped around my gun literally just intertwining everything and my goal is i just want to get a hold of this fish so he stops making a giant mess i can brain him and then kind of deal sort out the <laughs> the issue i have you see how much of a cluster that is so with this guy i ended up finally braining him and uh and I end up wanting to help Scott out because I know he wants to dive and he's manning the jet ski. So I grab the jet ski line. I hook it. The, at this point, the uh, battery died on the scooter. So it's a much difficult, much more difficult uh, thing we're dealing with. So I just clipped my belt onto the rope. So I'm going to be with the jet ski and it's going to kind of pull me around. But I go ahead and bring this guy. And the way I get him off of my spear is I unclip my shooting line from my gun and i just pull it around that way so you know you're kind of unclustering a little tail end of the shooting string as opposed to trying to you know maneuver the fish and the spear all around your gun and trying to get it out tangled that way but while i was doing this you see scott is up in the distance and he takes a shot on pretty much the, an identical yellow jack and at least we know we got dinner. All right, you guys just dropped Scott off at the beach. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the jet ski out, head home. I'm gonna fillet some of those fish and I'm gonna cook up something special for you tonight. So do not go anywhere. All right, you guys, welcome back to my crib. I'm gonna give you a little run through on how to clean these fish. Got a nice, easy setup, got a bucket, some starboard on top of it. And I've been letting these guys ice for quite some time. So they're nice and chilled. Tip and move. Please, thank you. All right, so I'm gonna keep it super simple. All right, you got the fish right here. You can feel the softness in his head and you wanna just make an incision right along. It goes hard right there, soft right there. So just make an incision all the way to the top. Then you, once you do that, flip your knife, then cut outwards. Usually you don't have to do it with this fish because you know, they're like butter because they are also known as butter jacks. And the way you just do it is just go along the ribs this way. Keep it move. You're in the people's way. Nice and along the ribs. And literally the knife, it feels like you're almost not cutting anything. Um, you'll feel the, the uh, what are those called? The pin bones cut through right up here. And you get through a sharp knife. Goes a long way. And you'll do it literally to the other side. Do the same thing go along that soft spot on the head. Flip the knife outwards, go along the top. Just with using the tip of the knife, flip the knife now and go along the bone, the backbone. You have to be careful, especially when you're using such a sharp knife. Then you'll go in and turn it. You have to be careful when you're using such a sharp knife, you'll actually cut through the middle of the fish sometimes. And you feel those, those little pin bones cut Try to get the knife flush with the fish and then go out like that. Did not do a great job, but that is what you are left with. And Chiva can munch on that. I love this knife. Pull it, extend it. Now it makes it so much easier to fillet from this point on. Uh, pinch, just guide the knife, nice little slices. And the, I like using the, and you put it, put it towards the end of the cutting board. I like using this long knife because this skin is kind of a pain in the neck to work with. See, see how you get the pieces of skin? You have to, I mean, you could probably eat those. It's not a big deal. Tiba, come here. Good girl. All right. No, you're not gonna eat that. Um, but uh, I mean, you could probably eat the skin, but it's not a big deal. And then you see the bloodline. Bloodline, it bleeding the fish really does help out with that, but you angle your knife, work along the bloodline, then go straight down, because there are ribs. Angle your knife along the edge of the bloodline, turn it, and go straight down. And then your left, you got the main bloodline here with bones in it, and then you're left with these beautiful chunks of fish. And if we think you have a really long one, you can just cut that in half. Now you have some nice chunks of meat. And whenever I store this stuff, and check this out, um, I have a bowl with some 
paper towels and I just lay them like that and then I'll just put another layer of paper, paper towels and I'll just keep stacking them that way. Make sure Tiva doesn't get into it. Tiva, no, I'll give you some, just relax. But that's how you do it. Um, and uh, I'll show you, I'm gonna do a really easy and delicious way uh, to cook up this yellow jack. So don't go anywhere, I'll see you guys inside the kitchen. <sighs> Freaking Tiva, I was finishing up and I turned around. She snuck in. Tiva, what'd you do? Hey, what'd you do? You know what you did. Hey. Tiva? You think you're innocent? You think you're innocent? Yeah, she knows what she did. She freaking, I turned around and she's eating a whole piece and I was like, oh no, did I forget a scrap? I looked over and she freaking got into the, at least she only took one. She took one little slither of some yellow, or rainbow runner, so I'm not, it's not the end of the world. Hey, are you bad? Are you bad? All right, we are in my kitchen and I have everything pretty much prepped and this is one of my favorite dishes. Um, I'm gonna do a little bit of modifying to it because I don't have the full ingredients, but what I'm gonna do is I have all the fish laid out in a pan. I already non-stick this. I have the oven set on 400, and then I have this skillet. I used a little bit over the recommended amount, but I used almost a stick of butter, and then these are the ingredients. I'm gonna mince these garlic, this garlic up, and I'm gonna let this butter cook down. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. I'm gonna let it cook down and I'm gonna mix in the garlic, some Tony's Creole seasoning, some Worcestershire sauce, and then some parsley flakes. I also have another thing of parsley flakes there. Uh, but I'm gonna let that all get in there. I'm gonna let it simmer, like kind of like bubble up, and then I'm gonna add some gluten-free breadcrumbs and some coconut flour. If you're gonna use regular breadcrumbs, you can use Italian breadcrumbs, that works really well. Uh, and then also, what I'm gonna add in there whenever it's kind of starting to cook down, and what you want to do is you want that butter to kind of gather up all the, the soak up all the breadcrumbs. And then, I'm going to get some goat cheese and mix it in the breadcrumbs to kind of give it that like kind of creamy paste. That's something new that I'm not, I've never tried before, but I'm gonna give it a shot and then also, before I add the breadcrumbs and the cheese in this skillet, I'm gonna get a, well, where is it? Yeah, I'm gonna get a little brush and I'm gonna baste all of this with the herbs and butter. All right, so now everything was cooked down. I went ahead and basted this stuff, uh, the fish in the juice, and then the leftover juice I am mixing with the breadcrumbs. And now I'm making sure it all the delicious butter gets mixed in with the breadcrumbs though they become like a kind of a soggy looking it'll be better if those were gluten free but obviously a little less healthy uh, and what i'm going to do is i'm going to put this i'm going to spread it out over all of oh i'm going to add the cheese also and then i'm going to spread it out over the fish almost going to turn into like a fish casserole and I love this because you don't really use a whole lot of dishes when you're cooking. Um, all it is is just this pan and a cooking pan and that's it. Just make sure everything gets somewhat spread out. I just at least make sure it's covered in a little layer and this turns into like literally a fish casserole. And you just like, you can use this wooden thing and just take chunks of it. Top rack. Let it go. So it took about 12 minutes. I pulled it out and this is what you get. It was a little light golden brown on the top and the way I tested it is just the edge of the, of the fish find the thicker part and if it pulls apart and just breaks apart like that, you know it's ready. All right, so I'm gonna make sure I, I'm gonna taste test it. Actually, I'm gonna let this cool down a bit. So I made this look really pretty. Got some veggies on the side with some seasoning and some sauce. And I think this is warm enough to actually eat, but let's give it a shot. And why is there a mosquito in the house? All right, it's go time. It's not, it's steaming a little bit, but we'll see.
Pretty good. That goat cheese makes it taste good. I can taste it. Just a little bit. Gives it a little bit of extra cream, but yeah, zero fish flavor at all. That's good. And super easy to make. And very healthy, especially if you do, you know, do coconut flour or gluten-free breadcrumbs. Uh, but if you want to go the other way, I'm sure it tastes a little bit better. But either way, that's delicious. You guys, if you try this at home, let me know what you think. And on a future video, if you enjoyed this video, feel free to comment below. Love getting out there on the water. But man, it sucked about that wahoo. It would have been much better eating some fresh sashimi or some kind of beautiful wahoo dish. One thing I did take, take away from this trip was that Janino Sea Scooter was a lifesaver. Normally, the jet ski is not that much to manage, but with the wind absolutely cranking, that scooter literally saved us. And once the battery, because it lasts about an hour, once that battery died, we were kind of, we were just on our own and, and we felt the full, full force because we had to kick and keep up with the jet ski to, you know, keep it with the other divers. And uh, yeah, having literally that scooter tow the jet ski and tow us was game changer, especially when you're diving like that. The current down below is a little less than the current up off the surface, especially when the wind is blowing it the same way. It just, it, it was easy to be off of the diver if somebody was down and that was a, a way to keep it really safe. But yeah, if you're interested in one of those, feel free to check out the link below. Very affordable. I don't know if you'll use it in the same applications, but I do know we put it to the test. It was literally towing us and the jet ski and it didn't have a problem keeping up. So it's got the power, it's got the battery life. So give it a look and thank them for sponsoring this video, which is why there are way less ads in the video. And if we keep that up, I'll keep, putting less ads in the video and I can manage that. So if you guys enjoyed this video, give it that thumbs up. If you're new, subscribe, comment below, do me a favor. Let's push this video around the algorithm, share it, and I'll see you next week for another adventure. Later.